Hey, Steve, when you go to conventions, what do you go for? Hardcore gaming. Pretty much, right? Absolutely. So when you see a convention coming up in the Chicagoland area like Dragonfall, what are you going there to do? I'm going there to play some games. And that's right. So for those who are interested, Dragonfall is a two-day gaming convention, October 15th and 16th at Pheasant Run in St. Charles. This is the second year. They are having two-day 40K championships with the ITC format at 1850 points. They're also going to have a two-day event for Kings of War, one of your favorite games. Nice. <laughs> and they're also having a two-day X-Wing event and a lot of single-day events, including Infinity, Bolt Action, Ninth Age, using the Ninth Age scenarios, Arena Rex, which Arena is... Arena Rex! I was going to say a game that we both love. <laughs> That's a good one. X-Wing, X-Wing Hangar Bay, and X-Wing Trench Run, which was at the Bolt Action Room in Adepticon, if you saw it, which was a pretty a neat-looking table. If you guys are interested, you go to www.dragonfall.com. That's dragon-fall.com, where you have all your information needs. Hello, Steve. Hello, Jill. It's time to game classy. Hey, guys. Welcome to Game Classy. Hello. Hey, we're not we're not gonna do a cold open. Jeez. We normally go in, you know, like talking about something, and then <laughs> it like fades in, and then Steve's like, "So about that stuff that happened to my anus the other day, you know?" And then you know that's when we gradually transition into gaming news. Uh, we're not doing that today. We're recording uh, once again on a Wednesday night because Steve is going to be out at a Star Trek convention all weekend. <laughs> Where's that? That was especially for that one guy who's uh Space, the final frontier. That that's <laughs> for that one guy who was uh really upset when we talked about Star Trek. Oh yeah, he was very upset. Yeah, I'm gonna I wanna talk about I wanna mention Star Trek every, every cast, cast now. <laughs> oh yeah, we're doing it for sure. Where's it at? Just wait until the RPG comes out. Uh it is in Rosemont at the Westin. Okay, is it at the Westin, all right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I that was uh I, I'm, I was contemplating going, but I'm going to be on a, on a baby duty. So. I am a genius. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, it cracked me up. <laughs> it's like, it's everything that you say. You're like, Psh, I know how to play this game. I'm a genius at it. And you're like, oh, no, I've lost. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. How could this happen? Every board game with Steve. All right. So, Steve, you want to you wanna crack into the, the big news? We're, we're catching it on the... On the hotness right now. Where are we? Oh, yeah. We've got some hot news. Yeah. The uh, game uh, Games Workshop's pulling their license from Fantasy Flight. I haven't seen any confirmation of that whatsoever. Yeah, at all. I haven't really seen... I, I saw wild speculation on EN World, and I saw a bunch of people covering the actual news that Games Workshop is looking to license their games for literally everything except tabletop games. Yeah. So I believe that news is a complete falsehood. Uh... There are still many, many planned expansions for the 40K LCG. Which is, uh, I find this really weird because, like, we were literally talking about this on, you know, the the Gen Con cast a couple a while ago. And some yeah. people were like, so do you think, you know, all of, like, the, what is it, the Rune Wars game is going to be, you know, because they're dumping fantasy. I'm like, Fantasy Flight never really ha was going to open up into GW's market with mini games. It's not like... Not like GW has a mass combat system fantasy game anymore. They yeah. don't. It's the, gone. The only, the only uh, website that is pushing that story that Workshop is no longer licensed with Fantasy Flight is EN World. There's no other... Every other person who's covering that story has mentioned nothing about like this like supposed schism. There would have been an announcement. Like that would have been a thing. Like oh, there yeah. are there are games that are currently on presale that are under the G that are under that licensing. It's just, it's so you know, funny, it's, like, the rumor, because it's just why, a fucking rumor. Why, would, why would Games Workshop d dump that? It's not like there's any sort of overlap. Uh, I know Games Workshop has been dipping into the board game market lately. They did Silver Tower and Kill Team and all these other, like, silly board games that they put out that are just to sell the minis, of course. But that's fine. That's understandable. That's been GW's thing the entire time. Yeah. They I mean, it might, it, it might be accurate. Like, they, they might be not they might be opting to not renew the license that is possible however at this time the only thing that like there's a list of things that games workshop was looking to, for its ips to be licensed as yeah and not one of those things was tabletop games no there was uh video games uh it's like toys video games toys um i think comics 
uh, see if I can find it. Uh, I actually have a list. Uh, give me a second, and I'll pull it up. But uh, yeah, so I don't know. That's the only, apparently, the only site that I've seen that's talking about it. Um, it is definitely a rumor, uh, and it might, and again, it might be true, but. And it's just it's it's it seemed like shoddy reporting to me. And Games Workshop has never done any of like their RPG stuff in house. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, am uh, I, I think way back when the first Whiff Rip was was, it was published Hog, by that was Hogshead Publishing. Oh, that's I, right. But I don't know if Hogshead was just a division of GW. Yeah, kind of like a couple like, 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 like or like, Sabretooth like, Games. Yeah, Sabretooth Games, the makers of the UFS fighting system, and then the, the, of course the the previous 40k card game. Uh, where everyone thought it was their own company, but it's actually just a subdivision of Games Workshop. Workshop yeah. yeah. That is accurate. Uh, yeah, so m- that might be the case. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, it it just seems so so bizarre to me, and I, I know everyone was upset. They're like, "Oh no, Fury of Dracula!" I'm like, people <laughs> people play Fury. Oh, of Dracula? Dude, Fury of Dracula is popular as shit. Is it? Yeah, it's super popular. Uh, okay, here here's the official list. This is what they're specifically looking for licensing license deals for: video games, entertainment, apparel, collectibles, publishing, and toys. Apparel. Yeah, close. Like, There's actually I actually so saw I get my sweet Space Marine kicks. There is a uh, there is a British company that uh, they do like super high end clothes, and uh, they they already are producing a commissar jacket. Ooh. It's fucking sick looking, but it's like eight hundred bones. Is it like cosplay company? Uh, or it's it's so it's it's an actual everyday like trench jacket that one could wear as a normal Ooh. human being, but inspired by like it has Oof. like a it doesn't look like an actual commissar jacket. It doesn't look like a Nazi jacket. Okay. It's kind of like, well, not, it, there's like it some. Never, it was it was more like Soviet. Right, know, well, there's know. some there's some angles cut, and there's like some like. Uh, so you look like you're from a Janet Jackson video in the early '90s. Maybe a little bit. Okay, which is sweet. I guess. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. I don't know. I always have an issue with trench coats. <laughs> I just. Is it, well, yeah. As long as you don't have the trilby and the katana with them, you're fine. It, yeah, it's just, just trench coats like part of that whole look. Yeah, I, I, I tr- mean, I, I think the trench coat's falling out of favor. Well, it has. I mean, you know, that's, some people in the 90s really did some bad stuff to, like, put those out of favor, but they, they made a comeback. I have no idea what you're referencing. No, I have no idea what I'm referencing either. Was it The Matrix? Because <laughs> yeah. that movie was great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was The Matrix. That movie was sweet. It was 1998. It was a fun time in America. All of a sudden, the social outcasts started wearing trench coats for some odd reason. No, I wore a trench coat in, in the 90s because I was like, I'm cool. I'm buying all my stuff at Army Surplus Stores. And then I, you know, grew up and I was like, I'm not wearing a trench coat anymore. This is kind of silly. This coat is infinitely too long for my needs. Well, maybe some people need it, you know, need a long coat. Yeah, maybe they're in the trenches and they they need to protect their, their whole protect body. protect their legs. Yes, from, 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 from trench. The, from the weather. From trench foot. Yeah, and they don't, don't want to like, get that rot. They don't want to get that rot. No, Nurgle's rot at all. But yeah, apparel. I always think of whenever I think of, of 40k apparel, I think of those ads you see pop up on oh, Facebook. Oh, with the screen print shirts? With the screen print shirts, but they're like so badly photoshopped, like where the words are just like hovering over. <laughs> it's just a picture. The shirts never look like that. I know. I'm just, it's just so bad. That's whatever I think of like Well, those are, all, those are all unlicensed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, okay. and that's what I find funny. That's, that shit is rampant. Yeah. Well, that's what I find funny about, about with GW is, is that because they've lost so many court cases, it's like. It's they have lost control over the majority of their IP at the moment. Mm. They can't do anything right now, so they're grasping at straws. I mean, they still have a super strong IP. Like, well, yeah, but that's, I mean, that's what, but now they're actually trying to capitalize because the more the, and it makes sense from a business standpoint because the more you use and license your IP, the stronger it gets. Yeah, that's that's the thing that's you know might if you because you can't because like I'll use Nintendo as a good example. Nintendo has a complete stranglehold over their IP because you cannot replicate a nintendo game like, no it doesn't work like you can't do that with gw i can if i'm talented enough i can make space marines cromlech does it all the time they make things that look just like fucking space marines uh what did they do? someone they just someone just made like a nintendo game that they shut down it was like some sort of like anniversary edition or something there like. was a there was pokemon uranium maybe okay maybe it was some po- there, pokemon game or something was, there was like pokemon that. uranium there was a um that people do unlicensed Nintendo shit all the time. Oh, Metroid. Metroid Me- oh, 2. Metro- okay, yeah, there that's was what it was. It was Metroid, Metroid 2. 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is a great game. I played that in, on Game, game. Boy. Yeah. yeah, fantastic game. Uh, yeah, it wasn't fantastic. I mean, for, it was for it Game, was game Boy? Boy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like you gotta you gotta put everything into perspective. That was, was on a that was on the brick Game Boy. There was like three great games for Game Boy, not including mm-hmm. Tetris, and that was um, Metroid well, Two is one of those. Metroid Two. Uh, Kirby's the, Dreamland. Yeah. Okay. I'll include Kirby's Dreamland and the uh, the Legend of Zelda the the. The the dream, 
Oh, I know Warriors. the one with the, the one with the owl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I can't remember the name of it. There, there was actually a bunch of Zelda games on the, but that's the one everyone played. played the first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, there's some, there's some quality titles yeah. on the Game Boy, but I mean it, it's and maybe Wario Land. The, yeah, I liked Wario Land. Yeah, Wario uh, Land was decent. It's the Game Boy, you know, like it's like it it was a very popular thing, yeah. but it's definitely a product of its time. You don't actually see a lot of people trying to hunt down Game, Game Boys. Boy games. Yeah, you know, you, you I do still find, got my brick one down th- uh, in my basement. If you like, there are some Game Boy games that are worth like some money for sure, but the games are no one wants the actual Game Boys because you can Bart play them Simpson on the Escape SPs. from Camp Krusty. Probably not. Most oh, of the, most of the licensed games aren't worth dick. Yeah, uh, unless it was a unless it's still a popular license and. The game was like good. That was that was, that was nothing to do because so many of those licensed games were just dross, like made by like LJN or whatever. Uh, and that's I was you know I, with Workshop shipping out all these licenses to all these mobile games. I assume a bunch of them are terrible. I don't have the time to test all of them. Plus, some of them cost money. So, um, someone was saying uh, that the Battlefleet Gothic one is really good. We were talking about the, we were, it was funny we talked about this yesterday because uh, I had one of the one of the listeners there was some cr- there was some cross splashing uh, of uh, dude asking about the, the licensing. He's they're like, what about video games? And then also Joe and Steve kind of talk about it uh, tabletop wise. Um, so uh, there's a couple games that I did play uh, that are good. Uh, there's there was one where you play as the Night Titan. And like the whole game is you're just a night titan. That game is very fun. Night titan. Yeah, is it, it called night titan. It's not. It's called something else. But it's like you just like run around and just fucking kill shit as a night titan. It's very fun. Uh, the Battlefield Gothic is a real time strategy game using the Battlefield Gothic rules. Yeah, I've so heard. It, I've heard. It's I've actually good. heard that one's fairly good. Um, there's they have direct ports. There's Warhammer Quest is on there. Yeah. Um, so is Talisman. I played Talisman on Steam, and it's it's not. Great. I mean, it's just, but it's just Talisman. Talisman. Yeah, exactly. It's There's... like if you like the game Talisman, you will like the video game because it's the same thing. Hey, do you don't have any friends to play Talisman with? <laughs> play on Steam. The new one, uh, the new Space Hulk game where you play as the uh, the Deathwing against the Gene Stealers looks fucking sweet. Looks I haven't really played. I played. Good. I, pl- I have. Uh, I have the the Space Hulk one on uh, on Steam as well, and that game's all right. I mean, that's another direct port. It's not like anything special. On that one, I haven't. I haven't well, seen. Well, this one's going to be an FPS, yeah. like so. It's going to be. A, it's going to be a game set in Space Hulk. I so, haven't seen the uh, the Mordheim one played yet. Uh, I heard that's Mordheim's rules. So, okay. uh, yeah. So maybe Fantasy Flight is losing the tabletop license. There's nothing. Con- there's nothing concrete. Nothing confirmed. I don't think that's likely because the games sell pretty well. Uh, and if they are, there's the only thing that would make sense is is if Workshop has found someone else to buy that license in a clandestine manner. Because I mean, their their partnership's been go- going on for quite some time. A very long time. So at least over ten years. At yeah, this point. The, and the, and if there is an end, the only thing I can imagine is because of the it would be the only reason would be because of the Asmodee purchase. You think that's the only thing I could think of? You think GW just doesn't like the Frenchies? Oh, no, I think Asmodee would shut it off. Asmodee owns Fancy Flight yeah, now. So yeah, well, and it, plus. Would Games Workshop be able to go to any other company that's not owned by Asmodee at this point? Um, they could do ILO, the people who make King of Tokyo. Yeah. Um, I don't know any other company that has the kind of... In, like, uh, the only other real option is Hasbro. Yeah. So, I mean, if they got a contract with Wizards of the Coast for Hasbro, like, that would make sense. Because yeah. Hasbro is, uh, you know, giant. Yeah. Um, th- yeah, I'm not well, sure. I, 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 Games Workshop... Who knows what's going on at this point? But I, I, yeah, I, I don't I, think that it's gone. I think it's people... I think it's uh, the fact that... People are looking at workshop shopping out their IPs because they're shopping out their IPs because they want to sell it to people. And I think people are like, oh, no, Fantasy Flight. Like, I think it's, <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Fantasy Flight. Yeah, I think people are just, uh, you know, putting their own thing in it. Because, like, yeah. yeah, no, games are going to give a fuck about Rune Wars. Yeah. They don't give a fuck about Rune Wars. The, the, most, the most damaging game that has come out, again, and, like, this is the thing. This is the argument against anyone who thinks Rune Wars matters uh, in the, like, GW Fantasy Flight paradigm. Uh X-Wing is the game that did the most damage to Workshop. Which you can play. By o- fucking far. Which you can play at October 15th, 14th, and 15th at Dragonfall. That's true. If you're not playing 40K, <laughs> you can play X-Wing. Or yeah. both. Yeah, why not? October um, 15th and 16th, I think it's the 14th. That's right. 15th and In St. Charles. In St. Charles at Illinois. Fezzabron. Yeah. Where uh, there's a Zany's comedy club. I've been so there a couple times. That's And that's the thing. Like, I, you know, I think it, people are just like they see something like that and they're like, oh, it must be that. And it's like, no. Like, th- they, damage done. All right. Like, yeah. damage done and it was done by X-Wing. Like, they didn't even need to make a rank and file. Like, and a rank and file miniatures game is not going to do any damage to any of the games that currently exist. Yeah. And as I, I think we, as we said in the last p- couple podcasts, it's like, it's a cool concept. 
Will it fly? Who knows? Maybe. I mean, it's not going to be huge. Rank and no. file minis games are the are the are they're the they're the niche in the niche in the niche. They're like the most narrow demographic you could possibly because you have to find the guy who wants to have the big battles. Yeah. Of a big size. Yeah. Because there's a because there's actually more small scale players like 10 mil and 15 mil there are more of those than there ever were of fantasy but they're not all playing the same game yeah i mean i i i would probably disagree with you because i think most people when they're doing rank and file like historical games uh usually play 15 mil that's generally well, what like i 10 see 10 or 15 yeah mil. um however i don't think i've I, i've seen very few fantasy players on that scale most almost any time i've ever seen fantasy played granted narrow window in chicago land community which is or a workshop, used to be it's a workshop town it's a workshop town <laughs> they all played fantasy sure and now it's now the great division but between ninth age and age of sigmar the, the and long the the, the wide War. scope the wide lens is uh they definitely play uh less you yeah. know the, the rank but, but, and file is a very narrow but most people who play those fifteen and ten mil games play in their basements. They right. don't. They don't play at the There's LGS, no tournaments. They don't the go FL. to the local game store. Yeah. Um, God, why aren't there tournaments for what? For for that sort of like a ten mil game. I could, probably because the rules are loose. Yeah. You know, it's probably it's a recreational game. It's not supposed to be a competitive. You got you need to have a. There needs to be a certain level of your rules to be to do tournaments. Like you need to have, you know updated rules a some sort of rules committee like something uh yeah you know i mean like because i always think like of all historical games that have tournaments because there's a couple i mean bolt action is one and 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 saga is the other i mean but action is just 40k with no aliens yeah i mean I, i'm just yeah exactly yeah and 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 saga and both of them keep their rules fairly updated fairly quick I, I think a lot of those smaller games are meant to be played over several hours in your basement while th you know throwing some drinks back with your you know your friends with your buddies yeah with your gaming buddies right i think that's what those are for they're more like a you know that guy they're, that, the, they're the rpg of tabletop games yeah you know yeah you know that guy that he has some pretty questionable political views, but <laughs> you know what? He's the only person in town who will play this game with you. He's, so you kind of cut him some slack. You give him, you give him a pass on the Nazi <laughs> army. <laughs> you give him. It's not even that. It's, <laughs> it's 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 like man, we're playing we're playing a civil war game, and you just really into playing the rebels. You know, you really into playing the Confederates. Uh, I'm not saying anything. I'm not reading too deep into this, but you really get into it. The fact that you come in dressed as General Longstreet, that makes it a little crazy. But, no. Good, good I always, stuff. I always have that, because that, that's one of my major issues. I mean, I'm, I always say I'm a, I'm a very liberal guy, and we've talked about that on the podcast, but it's like, man, so many people that play these games out here are so crazy right-wing. I mean, just like, cra like holding and putting the Confederate flag on the back of your truck. <laughs> You, you know, uh, it, uh, throwing dyna sticks of dynamite into lakes to get your fish. That's like that's like the level that I'm dealing with here. And I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna separate this and talk about little <laughs> toys with you. I can't, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. But anyway, so uh, speaking of of quasi historical games and racism, um, I got a new game. Yeah. Yeah. Is it quasi historical and racist? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it to you. Great. I'm really excited. That looks stupid as shit. Why would you get that? <laughs> it's uh, for those who can't see because we're doing this on a podcast. It's Congo by Steve Tomahawk. We should just make them guess. We, we should have talked, talked about, about it. it without <laughs> making them guess. No. Yeah. It's Congo. It's um, by the same guys who do Saga. It's based pretty much off the Saga system, which is kind of cool. Um, I just didn't want to do Saga because I... Like every time I try you to just get, gotta be a hipster. Every time I want to get into Saga though, it's like I get like four or five Vikings. And I'm like, oh, these guys are cool. And then it's like I have to paint all of like the other Vikings, and they're all wearing like potato sacks. And I don't want to paint guys in potato sacks. Are you sure you don't want to paint guys in potato sacks? Mm -mm. Mm. Well, this looks really bad. Hey, look, Harambe. <laughs> I, I was good to show you he's, that he's yes. right there. Yes, that's how you hashtag, know. It's a good, hashtag dicks out. <laughs> that's how that's how you know it's a good game because Harambe is right there. I see. Um, oh, I didn't realize I could play Harambe in this game. My you can't changing. <laughs> <laughs> is there a guerrilla faction? Can I play an army of no? Gorillas? We can't. <laughs> um, no, it's it's basically the saga. It's so a, is this just a game where you play as white people murdering indigenous Africans? No, you, it's it's a it's a darkest Africa game, and it's you know darkest Africa games are as old as mini gamings have ever been. You in like saga, you form a 
Don't you love that new book smell, by the way? I uh, love, yeah, they all smell the same. I know, but I love it. I love yeah. that new book smell. Oh, no, it's good. It's just it's just weird that like no matter where it's from, just always, it always smells like yep. a new book. Always with that smell. Um, you you form a, a war band. Uh, you could either be like the great white hunter, you know, in search of of his uh, his his prey. You could be uh, Native Africans. You can be all sort. Uh, you could be uh, like a sultanate. You know, it's like all sorts of s- silly stuff. It's I say it's the saga system with a little more racism in it, but it's a lot more. It's a lot more. (laughs) I do like. I do. This is very. This is very squicky. (laughs) You know, it's the British. What can I say? They love their colonialism. Uh, Uh, I mean, they really do. (laughs) Hashtag Brexit. (laughs) Um, Instead of the dice that Saga uses, use cards. It comes with a card pack that kind of works the same way as the dice. Um, What I do like about it is, is that the dice system in it, instead of rolling d6s. There's D6, D8, and D10s. So your better your better figures use D10s, and your lesser units use D6s, and you always hit on a five. So that's that's the rule. So it's always hit on five, no matter what you're doing. But so your good your guys who are really good are going to be rolling a D10, always hitting on a five, and the guys who are kind of crappy are always rolling on a D6, have to hit on a five. That's kind of a cool system. I've been told it's a little bit like Terminator Genesis, on that end. <laughs> Yeah, but I... Uh, well, you'll probably find about as many people who want to play this game with you as they want to play Terminator Genesis. Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. It's... Uh, Saga is, is huge right now, and uh, this is like their next... This is Studio Tomahawk's next big push. Well, so. Huge being very relative. <laughs> I, it's, it's a big tourney. I mean, for a smaller historical game, they put on probably one of the best tournaments at Adepticon. And I've said that before. Like, their tournament always has a great turnout. It looks fantastic. They have great prize support, and I just and it's it's very well supported in the community. So you're saying they're the kind of guys who'd give you a reach round, probably. Nice. But once again, it's the Viking stuff. So the guys come in with all the Viking tattoos on and everything. And you're you kind of like eight eight on their hand. <laughs> it's like you're kind of like ah, Thor's hammer doesn't doesn't quite mean the same thing nowadays. <laughs> Can't oh why can't I just play a game that doesn't have inherent racism in it? Oh. Says the guy who just bought Congo. I know. I, I, I'm conflicted at least. Is that something? What can I say? I don't know. We were talking about the the fact that the second most popular game miniatures game Warhammer 40k has commissars in it. It's just like oh, you know, quasi Nazis yeah. in space. Oh, what is it with our hobby, Steve? Don't turn around. Uh oh. The, the commerce stars, stars in town. town. Uh, 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 oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna give it a try. I I like I like the rule set at least. And I don't I don't notice any uh, particular like political ideologies any more so than in, in any other hobby. There's a mix. There's yeah. people who are right and left wing everywhere, and there's the smart people who are in the center. Yeah, I mean. Uh, you don't see any Nazis in magic. That's all I'm saying. Well, <laughs> yeah. You don't see them at the organized play because yes. cause Wizards organized play is very organized and they will eject you. Yes. Like and if you have, like you can be, that's the thing. Wizards, like they don't fuck around. So if you were to say, have a questionably, you know, white supremacist tattoo, someone would just report you to a judge and they'd eject you from the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, like you could get away with a questionably white supremacist tattoo at a workshop tournament. As long as it's questionable. <laughs> as long as it's questionable. As long as it's questionable. I don't think. No, you'd... no, no, no. This is the Imperial Aquila. Yeah, I yeah. don't think you'd get yeah. away with like a like a straight up one, but I think you get away with a questionable one at like at a Magic tournament. No way. I want to get a I want to get a pro Brexit tattoo. That's what I want to get. It, it it should be a uh, it should be a dude in. Um... No, I want to get. Like... Here's what it should be. It should be a dude in a, in a in a Union Jack shirt, busting through a wall, saying "Oh yeah," and he's uh, and then. The, it it kind of like does like a panel thing, and the next panel is him putting up a giant wall uh, that just says "Oh yeah." Oh no, I, I I was thinking more of getting a uh, like one of those. Fans- Why don't you just get Nigel Farage? Just get his face. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most pro no, no, tattoo I, you can have. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get Boris Johnson. That's okay, then get. you should do Bo- you should do Bojo. <laughs> well, I should you, do Bojo. You, you should get him in the jo- in the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure costume, but you make it Boris Johnson and just have just have Bojo's Bizarre Adventure. Bojo's Bizarre Adventure. Yeah, I'm just, not a big fan of done. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So. But I mean, it's the best meme. I, I didn't think it was a thing until you explained to me that it was a thing. It's I thought a huge it was just, thing. I thought it was just something that was made up. Oh, it's huge. No, but, but I still think it's made up. But it's it's a it's the best meme with Boris Johnson. Like it's so fucking perfect. Like Bojo's Bizarre Adventure, it's flawless. It's flawless. Th- there's there's no better. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I'll take your word for it. So what other, what other gaming news do we got going on? I got a thing here. You got a thing? Uh, yeah, from, from Twitter. From um, Twitter? Yeah, this is from a guy. A guy. Hashtag uh, a guy. He has a couple things here. The first, uh, talk about heavy gear. If you have any experience playing it, going to try and figure out the rules with, on Sunday with a friend. Well, uh, good luck. You probably won't be able to figure them out. Do the you last have time a, I played Heavy Gear, it was terrible. Do you I, have a TI-85? Because you're going to need to figure out log logarithmics <laughs> to figure out if you hit or not. Yes. Uh, quadratic quadratic formula. Get get, get yeah. brushed up on it. Uh, you might need to know a little bit of quantum theory. Negative B plus or minus <laughs> the square root of and I hope, you've, I hope you've brushed up on your physics. Yeah. Uh, I played a demo of it at Gen Con several years ago. Uh, I hated it. I couldn't believe how bad the demo was. Uh, yeah. It was slow, awful. Like it's a game. Like it should be easy bait to get me to. Like I'm an idiot. Like I'm an idiot weeboo who loves fucking Mecca. Like I should be like clearly easily baited into buying yeah. that game. And I left going like I'm never gonna buy that game. Yeah, I mean it's it's very similar to BattleTech in a lot of respects. I mean it takes a lot of its cues from BattleTech, of course. Right. But BattleTech. You know, I've had a lot of people lately who've explained I, like this has happened like two or three times in the last two or th two or three months where people have made the, made a very solid argument that BattleTech is not a miniatures game; it's a board game. Yeah, that is that just happens to be very very expandable, and it, but it's played on a table. It's played it's on a board. It's also super complicated. Yeah, like that's that's the thing. Like you would think if you're going to make a game that takes some cues from BattleTech, you would make it less complicated, not more. Yeah, and this is like you essentially. This is just uh, heavy gear is battle tech when plus. You, it's when battle you, tech plus. Well, you take away the mat is, yeah. is what it is, and the models are cool. Yeah, and like and every sweet. time you want to look at it, you're like, oh man, those, those heavy gear yeah, models those are fucking sweet. sweet. <laughs> yeah, and they're they're a little complicated to put together, but that's because they're posable, yeah. and you could do a lot of cool stuff yeah, with they're, it. They're great looking models. Yeah, it's like you want to do stuff with it, and you're like, oh great, but then again, it's like I want this to be super easy. So then you go see a game like Robotech, and you're like, oh, this game is super quick and easy and fun. Oh, this is great. Wait, how many pieces are each of these models? <laughs> I, want a, I want a customizable, but not this. Yeah, I would, say, I would say get the Heavy Gear minis and use them to play a different game. Yeah, um, that GKR Heavy Hitters is looking interesting. I was... Yeah, I mean, and to be fair, this this was years ago. Heavy Gear might have had new additions since then, but I remember it was like, it took forever. Uh, everything missed, and it was like cra you needed crazy high numbers, and nothing died. It was like the least action in yeah. a, in a minis game possible. But that's part of the thing, you know, with selling a game. And uh, GW perfected this: is the demo game. Like, how do you get people to want to play a game? You give them a fantastic demo game where they win in the end. Or even if, like, maybe they botch every role out there, they still feel great after playing it. Right. And then you, you want to keep playing the game. That's that's how it works. And then once they buy into the game, then you hit them with, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> that's not how this game is played. We're going to show you how to really play this game this time now that you've invested in the demo, in, in, yeah. the, in the starter set. Uh, and God bless them. They they can't do it. At least the one thing I will say about Heavy Gear is they do, like, all of their stuff looks immaculate when it's out on the yeah. table. They do a fantastic job of putting it out there. Um, but, yeah, I go ahead with it if you want. <laughs> yeah, give it a go. I mean, maybe maybe the rules are better than yeah. uh, Blue River 4. Touch back to Steve. Let him know how yeah, it is. Yeah, let me know. Let me know on the, on the Twitter. Uh, he also gave out another one. Uh, this one's this, this is the easiest, most slam dunk question I've ever been asked. Uh, what would be a good RPG system to play a fantasy pirate theme with? Yar. Uh, seven, seven C. C. <laughs> <laughs> Not Brand close. new, just came out. Yep. Seven C. Not close. Uh, play Seven C. If you want to add some more fantasy elements, if there aren't enough for you in the game, just add some fucking fantasy elements. Call some dudes orcs instead of humans. Yeah. Done. Wait, hang on. And to dust uh, dust my hands off. And See? actually, what's really he's cool, on fire. <laughs> and for some odd reason, there's a huge pirate resurgence right now. Like people are all about pirates again. But they they come and go. Like pirate games come and go every like five or six years. They're on a cycle. Yeah, there's uh the big one. Sea Falls coming up. Yeah, uh, Sea Falls on actually pretty cool. It's a post apocalyptic pirate game. Yeah, it's for some odd reason pirates are coming back now. There's that there's that rum and bones. Of course, if you want to get some a lot of cheap minis. Yeah. Rum and Bones is a good place to go. They got, some, they got the Davy Jones things going. Yeah, Rum and Bones, though, is it's a little little high of a... I guess it'd be okay for, for RPGs, but it's like a it's like a yeah. 32 mil, but it's a big 32 mil. I mean, bigger, bigger scales will work for, work for RPGs. Yeah. 
Um, I've always had problems with RPGs with boats, though. Boats are... I always want... Boats don't work in RPGs. They don't work in minis games, at least in 28 mil. You got to get, like... If you want to use boats, you got to use, like, the, the 1, 1,500th scale yeah, or boat, whatever it is. Boats are rough. Like, boats are best in, like, the background of your game. Yeah. Um, they can work in RPGs, but... That Sails of Glory game, though, was pretty good, which is... That's I, the big boat battle game, right? Yeah. That was, that was They did a Kickstarter for it. All the boats looked really great, and the rules were fun. We mm-hmm. played it a couple times. I do not... Uh, I have no problems with it. It's not something that I would probably be like, want to play on a regular basis. Right. It's not like where I'm like, hey, let's bust out Sails of Glory, guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you... And I think you actually could do a pretty decent 28 mil uh, boat game, but you'd need to be using some... I think actually, like, Age of Sigmar would be best for it, honestly. Humorously, humorously enough, I think Age of Sigmar would work best with a boat game because well, it's, like, it's loose. Well, every time GW wants to do a boat game, they always bust out the old-ass r- boat rules from General's Compendium. Which are older. Those rules are older than General's Compendium. But it's always like where they have like a wind dial and all. I'm like, uh, I don't want to use wind dials and all this stuff. I just want to roam. I want to sail my boat up. I want to shoot my cannons. I want to get close and I want to do a boarding. Action. Yeah, I think the best. I think the best use of them would be to do them with all sailboats that don't have weapons, just to make it a very interesting uh, board to move yeah. around in. Like where you have like so much negative space and you have guys like you have to you know manage moving your troops through very narrow corridors i think that would make it it's it's there to make it interesting and as we all know steve's favorite alcohol while gaming is rum <laughs> that's true <laughs> and drank you drank a lot of that kraken yes you drank a lot of that kraken that day <laughs> the sea was angry <laughs> that day my friends like an old Look man sh- trying to send soup back into deli Look straight into the blowhole <laughs> I looked at the eye of the massive fish, mammal, whatever. whatever. <laughs> marine biologist. <laughs> Does anybody hear a marine biologist? Uh, that's a great. No, line. And, yeah, I mean, boat. That's it's just boat games are just incredibly difficult to do, but whatever. It's hard to make them fun. Yeah, it's it's hard to do in twenty eight mil. Uh, you know, actually, uh, Roman Bones probably would work very well, but it's MOBA style. So. Yeah, Roman Bones is like you have a ship and there's another ship directly across, across from, from yours. It, yeah. yeah, and it's just your guys running around from ship to yeah, ship. Yeah, they're running back and forth. Yeah. As I say, MOBA style. <laughs> yep. Is that it, it, So I think, yes, yeah, 7C, brand new. And actually, if you want to, you could track down the old 7C miniatures. Those are pretty easy to find. Play 7C. I think AEG put them out. Probably. Yes. Does he have anything else? That is it. Uh, that is it. What about gaming news? Do we have any 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 new news going on? Nothing that is like like actual actual news. There's that speculation, of course, about the GW thing, which is obviously you know like I, you know my feelings on that. I don't think it's true. At yeah. Least not at this time. Um, new Magic set looks really good. Uh, Kaladesh that is uh, looking quite strong. Uh, they spoiled a bunch of cards. There's a new f- config. They actually are debuting a couple new configurations. So Magic for a long time has been boosters, intros, and fat packs. Uh, fat packs being nine booster packs and like some random like lands and et cetera. Intros being really shitty starter decks to learn how to play the game. Uh, intros have always been bad. Um, they changed the name of fat packs to bundles because Ooh. they decided that fat pack was too nondescript of a name. Uh, and they and they and they they settled on the much more descriptive bundle, um, which I thought was humorous. But the only difference is it's a slightly more expensive MSRP, and it now contains ten packs instead of nine. Uh, that's the only real difference from what I've seen. Um, oh, uh, the box is supposedly better as well, so it's a little bit better of a storage box. But we'll see, you know, if that's accurate. Uh, and then the intro decks have been replaced by the much more exciting and much more sensical Planeswalker decks. And what the Planeswalker decks are going to be is they're going to be themed after a particular Planeswalker who is included in the deck, hence the name Planeswalker deck. And what they are going to be is they're going to be a not tournament level Planeswalker. So, example, the Chandra spoiled from the set is insane. Like, the people are talking it's probably going to be pre-selling for possibly more than $60 already. Wow. Uh, and it was spoiled yesterday. And, like, the hype is the hype is fucking real. Like, it is people are losing their minds about how powerful it is. So people are like, wow. Uh, and, you know, it costs four mana. It's very strong. It has four abilities. Very powerful. The Chandra in the Planeswalker deck costs six mana and is very dirtily and has three abilities. So, it's nothing special. But... It's perfect. It, like, for the actual intended use of what an intro deck is, is to get people into the game. 
it's perfect for that. And it's also got the secondary use of being good in casual formats because you know, like in um, in Commander, which is the most popular casual format, uh, all the Planeswalkers are good. Doesn't matter like if it's a Planeswalker, it is playable in Commander. So hmm. that, like if I'm a Commander player, I can grab one of those Planeswalker decks and go, bam, I've got a new Planeswalker to add to my deck. And you only need one, so it's perfect. So I think it's a much, I mean, I not think, I know it is a much better idea to do Planeswalker decks than intros, uh, for sure. Because the intros were always just garbage. It was like, it was a garbage foil rare and a garbage deck. It, it was garbo. Yeah, total worthless. Uh, so that, that that's pretty big. Um, then, other than that, um, there's the Crow board game that's coming out. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I had, I actually had a an rpg question for you and i wanted to uh, talk oh, about oh and there is actually actually there's huge news that's going to be that's going to affect the gaming market in some way there's a uh korean shipping company that went bankrupt oh yeah i saw about that you, yeah. you posted something about yeah that. so uh they currently have 80 ships that are stranded at sea from the company <laughs> um yeah so that's going to be bad um it is the ninth or seventh largest container shipping company in the world. Um, there are many geek products, so that's games, collectibles, comics, graphic novels, toys. Uh, many of them could be affected by this, especially because container shipping prices from China to the U.S. rose 50% in a single day last week because of this. So everything is going to get more expensive uh, in, that, in the sector, in the hobby sector. So that's that's grim news. It's likely uh, things are going to be much more pricey, at least for a little while until the market settles. But this is a huge upset. Like this is How a, are you going to get your Gundams? Uh, not just Gundam. Like, you, How you know, are you going to get your Gundams, you know, Steve? You know everything's made in China, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know everything is. And my Gundams will be easy to get because I import them from Japan. Uh, I just import them directly, so I don't need to worry. <laughs> I, I import them from the country they're manufactured in. I saw. Yeah, we're good. But uh, for anyone who's got, you know, children and they want to buy them toys or you know comic books or you know pretty much everything that's manufactured in china you're gonna pay more for it so my, my damn daughter and those zoom zooms well get get ready to get wrecked by it, a zoom zoom the the zoom zooms the little oh the stack stack, stack. zoom zoom yeah, zoom, yeah, yeah, zoom. yeah yeah i thought you said zoom zoom no zoom, yeah i know the zoom zoom yeah we, we talked about it on the podcast it's like she's just obsessed with them Obsessed with them lately. And I'm like, these things are so stupid. There's a really funny uh, crossover, obviously, because Disney owns Tsum Tsum and uh, Marvel. Okay. There's a great Marvel Disney Tsum Tsum crossover comic, and the opening cover is hilarious, or the, the, the front panel cover is hilarious. It's like, it's regular Spider Man, like jumping up in the air, and there's like Iron Man, and then there's a tiny little Tsum Tsum Spider Man jumping, <laughs> and there's a Tsum Tsum Venom, like about to fight him. It's the silliest. It just, like, I saw it, it just cracked me up. I was like, this is the stupidest thing. It's really funny. Well, she she wanted to get one, and she got Thanos. I'm like, nice. what is my daughter going to do with Thanos? Uh, obviously, get the Infinity Gauntlet and conquer the fucking universe. It did come with the Infinity Gauntlet. See? Yeah. So, that, yeah. so you answered your own question. Yeah. Um, I do have I have an RPG question for you. All right. Well, actually, how about before that, I wanted to talk about uh, Mysterium. Have you have you played Mysterium yet? Uh, I have not played Mysterium yet. Uh, I know it's great. Everyone says it's great. It is. The, this game is the new hotness. Uh, it's very hot. It's very hot. That and code names, a couple. Of, but yeah, it's it's a you know super popular. Um, if you haven't played Mysterium, do yourself a favor and play it. A lot of people really like it. It's a game where you uh, perform a séance to solve a murder, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So the the best thing is is that. Um, one player is kind of the, the, the ghost. He's the DM. He's not allowed to speak at all during the thing. So if you have that one ass in your group who just won't shut up, make him the ghost. Or they'll just talk and ruin it. <laughs> or they'll talk and ruin it. And then, but you could be like, Barry, knock it off. I don't know. I don't, I don't know any actual berries. So, uh, but yeah, and then the, they, they hand out cards every turn to kind of like give clues, but the cards are very, uh, you could read a lot into it. Mm -hmm. So like. There'll be like a tree and the, the one of the suspects could be like a, a woodworker and you could be like, oh, it's this guy because he's a woodsman. He's a he, he works with wood. And they're like, well, what about this woman? She's obsessed with squirrels. Squirrels live in trees. I think it's this woman. It, there's a lot of that stuff going. Not exactly that, but um, I was uh, I'm, I'm looking at picking it up for Halloween for my Halloween game and night. I would recommend it for that. Yeah, I think it w I think that would work. Maybe like one or two rounds of that would be fun. Oh yeah. But actually, uh, my RPG question that I have for you. I'm ready. All right. So as a DM, how do you feel about run running RPGs in a real world environment of like places that people know? 
you mean like setting them there? So like if I'm like we're gonna set this in Chicago, like yeah. the city of Chicago, the city of Chicago. Um, I think it's okay. I, I don't have a problem with it, but like I find a lot of times like those games end up being boring because like I mean I, I don't know when I do RPGs like I want I want the fantastical you know I want uh, yeah I want games about wizards and fucking sorcerers well, I mean and like you could do fighters that. and barbarians you could do that with uh um you could I mean werewolf by night uh, werewolf by night uh werewolf has a, a lot of s- stuff that happens in the real world uh, yeah I mean the white wolf games are the exception to the rule but I, I mean those games are all they're not really like I, I hate to say this, but they're not very good RPGs. Uh-huh. They're, they're mostly just like a way to be emo with your friends yeah. and like like ugh, like I don't know. There, cause so much of those games are about like just like weird political intrigue. I don't know. There's something about setting it in setting uh, any RPG in the modern time period, let alone a, fam- a familiar setting to you that kind of removes a lot of the. Uh, but, you know, it's like, what are you going to do as your werewolf in Chicago? Like, I'm going to do werewolf things. It's, it's, it seems like it narrows the game rather than giving you, you know, RPGs are supposed to be open and like, you know, yeah. I want to do lots of stuff. It's supposed to go narrow the game. Now, that's not to say that it's not good for one shots. I think for one shots, it's great. Yeah. You know, if you want to do a zombie outbreak in Chicago. Well, that's like because like last year stuff. on Halloween, I ran the zombie game. I had to take place in the western suburbs, you know, like this area that all my friends were all my gamers we're very familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, it was good, but I think it lent itself a little too much to metagaming. Like, they're like, oh, well, I know that I can do this here. And which is fun because it it, it, it takes out a lot of that, like, well, uh, I searched the office. and Because they know, like, oh, well, I know this is there. Yeah. Because in the real world, that's there. Yeah, I guess the, the best thing you can do is you, you can have, uh, you could set it in contemporary times, but not in a location that everyone knows. So something like, say, so you're from Chicago, Chicagoland area, say do it in New York. You know, it's not a city that people know. They probably don't know the streets. They don't, you know, you you can, you can, you know, like the the neighborhoods, like, you know, the Bronx and Harlem, you know, you know that, but you, it's, it's like a vague, you know, idea of it. You don't actually know Harlem. Uh, So, you know, that, that would be a good idea because then you have like, you know, everyone's kind of got a feel for it. But I mean, what's what's the purpose of setting it in? There needs to be a very specific reason to set it in like a real world setting that people know. Well, I mean, okay, so for example, what I'm planning on doing this Halloween, um, and the only person who probably experience this is Pat, but Pat might be in Uzbekistan for all I know, fixing robots during Halloween. So if if you're listening, Pat, it, this might be spoiled a little bit for you if you come over to play. But if you know you're in Uzbekistan, I'm sorry as well, <laughs> and enjoy the Uzbekistanis. Um, so I'm doing a Ghostbusters game for Halloween. I'm, okay. I'm going to use the I'm I'm going to be using the uh, the end of the world engine just because it's easy. It's mm-hmm. really great for one shots. But I'm going to have it take place at the Field Museum okay. in Chicago. Sounds sweet. Yeah. So I figure it's you're going to get the Field Museum map, right? Oh yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of I I want to I fucking love the Field Museum. You know, it's not it's not as great as I remember it to be. I mean, it's not as good as no, nothing's as good as when you're. Did you have you been to the science museum, the museum of science industry lately? Oh yeah, I got a membership. It blows. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's, it, kids it's, love it. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, like yeah. I, you, you like museums more when you're a kid. I, not every kid likes museums. <laughs> well, okay, B- <laughs> brainy wiener kids like museums. Yeah, I uh, was a brainy wiener kid. I mean, the museum of science industry has all of the same stuff they had when we were kids. I mean, like what's gone? That's it's not that it's gone. It's just like when you get older, you're like, oh, like perfect. Example, I watched the Never Ending Story uh, in theaters not too long ago. Turn that around. movie is fucking awful. Tell me what you see. That is a terrible, na, 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 terrible na, na, movie. Na. I could not believe how bad that movie was, but. It did have good puppets. It did have great puppets. Uh, but like, I believe that was a German movie as it, well. It was. Yeah. Uh, yes, it was the most expensive uh, German movie ever made. It was a uh, sixty million marks, <laughs> uh, which by that by that time was that not only was the most expensive German movie ever made, it was actually one of the most expensive movies ever made. Uh, even counting the even counting Hollywood, uh, it was a huge risk. And uh, I guess the writer of the uh, book tried to get the production shut down. <laughs> and because they they changed the ending or they they added when he comes back after the bullies on yeah. Valcor yeah. that that's made up that's like uh, yeah they they added that to the movie yeah that was completely added because it um, doesn't make any sense in the movie well and, not a lot of stuff in the movie makes sense and the but. the author was like no 
because the author's like this is all supposed to be made up in his head like you guys are pulling this out you're making it a disney movie and they're like well yeah we want to make it a disney movie <laughs> yeah we <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and uh, so and then the he tried. Dies. He tried to block it, and the German government was like, "No, no." <laughs> They're like, this, "This is this is a sixty million budget." Like, whoa, 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 whoa! The West German government. Yeah, yeah. There was like, "This is a sixty million budget. You would uh, do massive damage to our economy if you uh, got this film blocked." So we're going to tell you no. And you're probably making money hand over fist. Because oh yeah, of that's it. the thing. They were already. He was already paid. Yeah, because this is this is this is production. You know, like they're like they're at the point where they're talking about the ending of the movie, and he's trying to block. The, the release basically yeah you know money spent yeah. so it was just it's just funny um my I think these just hands like, are strong hands they look like big strong hands don't they <laughs> um i like more or less still more or less still really good. Yeah, not uh, that it matters but yeah no one cared about me till i put on this mask <laughs> if i take the mask off will she die <laughs> um so I think it's just a case of like when you, you remember things differently. Yeah. And, and I remember because I remember loving the Museum of Science and Industry. I always thought it was the coolest. And I recently went to the Field Museum and I was like, wow, this museum is way better than I remember. And then I also recently went to the Science and Industry Museum and I was like, this movie this museum is way worse than I remember. The, the weird thing with the Field Museum and I, it's a natural history museum in case for those who don't know, we're talking about it. It's, it's a natural history museum. And it's just like. Like, it's really depressing to me, like, walking through all of, like, these, like, rows and rows of animals that are stuffed. I mean, it's kind of cool because it's, like, this is history. These animals have been here for hundreds of years. Extinct or, ones? Yeah. Or I should say hundreds. Like, decades. These There's things plenty have, of extinct ones in yeah. there. Yeah. But these things have been here for a hundred, for at least a hundred years in some of these places, mm -hmm. which is cool. And they're, like, they're very well done. You get to see, like, the stuffed lines from from the movie Ghosts of the Darkness, the, the man eaters of, of Savo. You're like, oh, that's that's really cool. But at the same time, it's just like you're just like, oh, well, this is kind of depressing. <laughs> to be fair, they're they were going to be dead. By they would. Now. Uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah so. definitely would be dead by now. <laughs> it's like like that Simpsons where Marge sees the hang in there, buddy, with the cat hanging from the tree. <laughs> and they're like, copyright 1976. Yeah. Hang in there or not. This cat's been dead a long time. <laughs> yeah. 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 And there's kinda like like that. I just I love the mini and I like the miniature stuff they got there. I don't know, it just it's just a yeah, cool they, museum. Yeah, they have a lot of cool stuff. Like they have a and lot the, of the dinosaurs are sweet. Yeah, the dinosaurs. They, had, they actually did a lot. There was a lot more dinosaur stuff there than I remembered. Yeah, they redid the dinosaur section yeah. uh, and and, there, and the the kind of like uh, large like extinct mammal section yeah, too. Yeah, the, the Egyptian cool. stuff's cool. Yeah, I yeah. like I always like the Egyptian wing because I think that they do it pretty well. But it's like it's still like kind of like eh. But anyway, it's a perfect place to put like an, a Ghostbusters setting sure. for an RPG, right? So I mean, like, the museum. Yeah, get Ben Stiller in there. <laughs> Bueller, Bueller. That's Ben Stein. Oh, Ben Stiller. Oh, yeah. never mind. Ben Stiller is. What do you think? I didn't know what a you googly was. <laughs> you googly was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dad, I got the black lung. Pops, I got the black lung. You know what you should do? You should put a. You should put a. You should whatever you're doing in the story have have one room if they discover it that's got like paintings in it and yeah. make one of the paintings Vigo. Just describe it. Don't say it's Vigo. Uh -huh. Just describe it. And if they fuck with it, have them fight Vigo. Eh, I don't want to have them like. I, I, I'm not gonna make it too crazy. You're not gonna have them battle with Vigo, no. the master of evil. He's gonna battle your boys. He's That's a, not legal. The scourge of Moldavia. <laughs> <laughs> he ruled on a throne of pain. <laughs> Death uh, is but a window. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's just mad because he got killed by John McClane in Die Hard. He did get killed by John McClane. Was it that wasn't was it Die Hard? The yep, first Die Hard. Yeah, the, yeah, he's totally one of the German terrorists, and he gets wasted by John McClane. Well. John and then, then he became Vigo. Yeah. You know, it all worked out for him in the end. I mean, John McClane. <laughs> Why does bad stuff always happen to John McClane on, on, on Christmas? Uh, not the third movie. Third not the third one. No, time. it was summer. Actually, the... You know all, it's summer because they start actually, off with it was just the time, summer in the city. It was just the I first and the second one at Christmas. Yeah. The other ones were at the holidays. Yeah. The the fourth one, the the live free or die hard, terrible. Um, the, the, the fifth one, the one where he's like in Russia, where he goes to Russia? that one wasn't bad. I like that. It one. was all right. That was the one that, that was the one that everyone hated on the most. I, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. That one was, that one, it wasn't great, but it, it once again reaffirmed the people. They, Die Hard hasn't been great since Die Hard 1. It's the only one of those movies that's really great. I don't know. Oh, actually I take that back. Vengeance is really good with a Jeremy lot, Irons. A lot of people love Die Hard with the Vengeance. Vengeance is a really good movie. I take that back. Surprisingly, a lot of women really love Die Hard with a Vengeance. I don't know why, but you could ask a lot of people and they mm. and like a lot of 
a lot of girls and they'll say, I really like Die Hard with a Vengeance. Maybe because Sam Jackson and Jeremy Irons are sweet? I don't know. Sam and Jeremy Irons. Uh, I, I take it back, though, because Vengeance is really cool because it's so different. Like, I think the reason Die Hard 2 fails as a movie is not that it's a... Die Hard 2 is not a terrible movie. It's really not. The, the problem is Die Hard 2 is so similar to the first movie. It's like it's not bringing anything new to the table. Die Hard with a Vengeance is cool because it's like... Oh well, we're gonna you know we're gonna do something completely. You know, it's like it, it, for your game, your Ghostbusters game, you could do one instead of the field museum. It's like an enclosed space. You know, you're you're here. If you do if you do a sequel the next Halloween and you have them like busting around the city, that would be that's the difference. Yeah, that's kind of like what it I'm. Makes it cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it gives you something well, different. To be fair with Die Hard though, Die Hard one, two, three, and four were not written as Die Hard movies. The only movie that was written as a Die Hard movie was Die Hard Five. Uh, oh wait, what? The only well, like, the first one was based on a novel. Yeah, I never, I didn't even notice Cole changed her hair. Yeah, it's for the uh, it. convention. Yeah. What can? Oh, for the Star Trek. Are you going as an Andorian? No. That'd be fucking sick, though. And it's a, it's a cool looking Andorian look. I don't have the. Yeah, no, you need the, the antennas. Antenni. Yeah, it's true, but the. Uh, yeah, well, Die Hard... They oh, were... I finished Enterprise, by the way. Oh, yeah? Fuck, man. That show got great before Toward it the ended. the end, right? <laughs> so mad. Once they get past the nonsense of the Temporal War... I was War, so mad. And then they get into, like, all of, like, the Andorian conflict and everything. You're like, God damn, this get good. Yeah, got real good. And the episode where they have the, like, they just do cold open. Hashtag spoiler for Star Trek Enterprise if you don't want to hear it. Where they just do the cold open and it's totally different. It's, like, war and there's, like, machine guns and planes and the, and the music, like... Bun, 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 bun. Oh, and I'm like, the, mirror. the fuck? is this because it's, it's the mirror mirror, mirror. Yeah, yeah yeah and it, it opens up with the final scene in first contact where Zephyr cock and pulls out a fucking shotgun, shotgun and, and kills the vulcans <laughs> i was like that's fucking awesome yeah so i was i was really like i was upset when the, when the episode was i was like fuck well the problem is is they sh- what they did in season four they should have done in season like two and just completely wiped out all that temporal cold war stuff because it was awful it was an awful awful uh, story arc that just killed that show it went on too long. It yeah. didn't make any sense. It did no nostalgia factor to keep people who were interested in Star Trek watching it. it. They arced it too much. They tried to make it like Battlestar Galactica. It was terrible. I blame Battlestar Galactica for a lot of problems with TV. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Actually, in the majority of it's X-Files' fault, but I can't be mad at X-Files. Can't stay mad at X-Files. No, I can't. <laughs> I can't stay mad at, at Sexy Agent Mulder. It's got Mulder. <laughs> sexy Agent Mulder. Yeah, but I, I saw so him thinking like, what I'd like to do is I would like to set this in the real world. And I think doing it in Chicago at the field museum would be, is just familiar enough where I don't have to spend a lot of work front loading information as the, as the DM. Mm -hmm. So that my, my, my players will know enough about like, this is the field museum. I don't have to explain that. Like, this is a museum of natural history founded by Stanley Field and and blah, 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 blah. You know? Yeah. I think, I think it's a good idea for, if your background, if you want your your world to matter and not also simultaneously not be important. So that, that's a weird statement, but uh, it's because like in D and D, if you're playing in Greyhawk, say nobody gives a fuck about Greyhawk. Nobody knows shit about Greyhawk. Nobody cares about this fucking village's storyline. They want to go and like wreck shit. They want to be murder hobos, right? They want to be murder hobos. That's what they want to do. They're playing D and D. So, you know, nobody fucking cares. So there's the, the background is irrelevant in D&D. It's completely irrelevant, but nobody uh, but again, people don't even have a like any sort of handhold on the background. They're just like, is there a blacksmith? And you're like, yeah, there's a blacksmith. And they're okay, great. It's a medieval village. Of course right, there's a blacksmith. Yeah, there's, a, there's a blacksmith. And they're like, oh, great. Uh, how about a farmer's market? Yeah, there's a farmer right there. Great. You know, there's no real like weight of the world. It's just a fantasy world. It's generic. But when you're talking like the real world, Field Museum, I, I immediately think of the field... Like, I think I can see the Field Museum in my head. Yeah. So I know exactly what, to, you know, like, what that looks like, the scope, the scale, how many floors yeah. there are. Like, I know that. So having that information, if you're... If the if the setting is... If you're making the setting a character, using a familiar setting is much better yeah. than using one that people aren't familiar with. And and that... Go, but that doesn't necessarily have to be fictional or non-fictional. Like, if you're playing a Lord of the Rings game with a bunch of people who are super into Lord of the Rings and know a lot about Middle-Earth then the setting can be as much of a character as 
Chicago, yeah. if people live in Chicago. Well, yeah, and th- that's the thing too is like, I know my players have been to the Field Museum and they probably they probably haven't spent a lot of time there, but that's perfect for a game like Ghostbusters because Ghostbusters the guys have to be blue collar. They're not like people who go to the museum on a regular basis. They're not like people who have the layout of the museum memorized. Maybe one of them does. Maybe one. <laughs> But I mean, like it's it's Egon. There's something, but there's something fun to be said about having it as a blue collar experience, where you're just like, this is a job. It don't like, where's the job at? It's at the Field Museum. All right, you know, it's not like, you know, spend a lot of time there. Or Print is like, dead. Print is dead. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually contemplating having it take place at the Oriental Institute in Chicago. Never have been. I ever talked about it on the cast before? Never been. Oriental Institute in Chicago is. For nerds, like history nerds, it's amazing. For anyone else, it is the most driest, boring place on the planet. Sounds like I would not dig it. <laughs> you walk in there, and it's all like, it's all Middle Eastern stuff. So it's like Sumeria, Babylon, uh, Persia, ancient Egypt, and it's all like in like how you would imagine Indiana Jones's museum would be, like Marcus Brody's Bongs museum. museum. Yeah, you walk in there, and it's like it's it's all just everything's on display. There's a little description next to it. But they have, like, if you dig into it, though, such cool stuff. Like, they have statues of Pazuzu. From, from, <laughs> nice. Yeah, exactly. Like Pazuzu. You, <laughs> you get it. No one else will get it, though. Oh. And uh, they have, like, the big Lama Sioux statue. That's fucking sweet. It's gigantic. And, like, if you're... Hey, that sounds cool. I you, know. You buried the lead. <laughs> but that's what I'm, but I'm burying it because, like, you would go there. You'd be like, oh, this is this is interesting. This yeah. is this is fantastic. They have mummies and everything else. Okay. So it's ancient history. Yeah, ancient okay. history. Okay. See, I like ancient history. I don't yeah. like contemporary history. Well, that's why it's that called... That goes for World War One, Civil War, Revolutionary War. Basically, if there's guns, I'm not really interested. Yeah. Well, it's the problem is it's called the Oriental Institute, which goes back to the old-ass term of Oriental, meaning... The you Orient. Know, the Orient. Like... The, no, just meaning like East. Yeah, not, the Orient. That's what it is. The Orient. No, it's it's not like Orient is in colonialism. Like that's one of my favorite gags from the Tick, the original one with Patrick Warburton. Yeah. Where uh, they, well, the second one, the original one's the cartoon, sir. Uh, well, there, no, it's the it's the original live action because of the new live action now with well, uh, yeah, the we, guy from uh, Shaun of the Dead. We reviewed it on uh, Comic Book Logic. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I heard it was. Eh. Uh, uh, it's, it's pretty eh. yeah the but it's uh they the lady they're at a chinese restaurant and the lady brings him a plate and uh his fortune cookies on and he's like oh exotic treats from the orient and he just starts eating them <laughs> and he's like nuh, nuh, and he pulls the fucking note out and he's like oh i've got a message from my teeth <laughs> and i was like that's great <laughs> so, so I, like that you know I, I was like why did this show get canceled <laughs> Because uh, it was probably very expensive, no, no one watched it, yeah. and it was on Fox. It was on Fox, the most dangerous network to be on. But yeah, so it's like you go there, and they have all this like great ancient history stuff. And like, look, guys, I, a good chunk of the people who listen to this podcast are not in the United States. We don't have a very in-depth history here. What are you talking about? We got two hundred years, <laughs> two hundred years, two hundred years. years. We're number one, two hundred years. Getting close to two fifty, sir. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't like wait let me reiterate that <laughs> we don't have castles like we can't like I, I like watching Antiques Roadshow on the BBC where they're like I found this sword in my attic and the guy's like oh this is the sword of Charlemagne <laughs> you know this was literally distributed to the king from a woman in a pond <laughs> yeah and, and they're like oh that's great I could sell it for tea money and then they like they're like You'll get five thousand pounds for it, and we're like, "Oh, that's great!" And then you go to watch Antiques Roadshow in America, and they're like, "I got this blanket. It's from 1975. How much is it worth?" I, I think that's the reason so many Americans are um, are dickheads with America boners is because we don't have a real history. Well, we so, have a history. It's just not. I a, said a in, real history. It's not an in depth history. Hashtag real. Hashtag real. Like we don't have a Hashtag real woke. history. We have a we have a fucking garbo history. Ugh. Sorry about that. We have a Garbo history that's not very long and not very in depth. Well, yeah, it's, it's just that we just haven't developed a history yet. But that's what I'm saying is like, so for us to be able to experience a place where we get to see like mummies and like stuff from Babylon, it's kind of cool because we don't get that here. Do they have Gilgamesh? They do have stuff from on Gilgamesh there. Yeah, yeah. Gilgamesh is the fucking nut. <laughs> they, I think they have a piece of the uh, the original Gilgamesh um, tablet, like one of the ones that they found because. Sick. I, and people on the podcast are going to be like, why are they talking about this stuff on a gaming <laughs> podcast? It's because me and Steve geek out about this stuff. Is that they, uh, the guy who founded the museum actually went to my alma mater college 
And he was the one, he was like one of those guys who went over to ancient, you know, Mesopotamia and stole a bunch of crap and brought it back to America. Awesome. Yeah. So you get a lot of really cool stuff there. It's actually one, one of my uh, one of my favorite anime. It's called uh, Fate Stay Night, and it's be- it's a uh, historical. F- Long story short, it's Pokemon, but they're historical figures. Yeah, and each person's a wizard, and they have a chosen historical figure to Teddy fight. Teddy Roosevelt, them. I choose you. Basically, uh, yeah. but they have one historical figure, and uh, Gilgamesh is one of them. And all of the historical figures have uh, things they call. Um, oh fuck! What do they call it? Uh, it's a divine. Uh, it's, the, it's not called it's not this but it's like a divine aspect or whatever and uh each hero has x number of them based on their legend so basically the more the, the more larger in life their legend the more ridiculous they are as like resurrected to fight in this war for the holy grail so uh hercules uh who's resurrected as the berserker he one of his uh aspects is the nine trials so he has to be killed nine times that's his, that's one of his abilities. Like he gets stabbed, and they're like, "Oh, he's totally dead!" Ha ha! I've won the fight, and then he beats the shit out of the person who stabbed him. And it's like, "How is he still alive?" It's like, "Oh, you have to kill him nine times." Like he just comes back to life. That's one of his powers. And so, uh, King Arthur has Excalibur and the uh, the sh- the uh, the hilt. So it's things that they were buried with, things uh, things about them, uh, and. At one point, uh, one of the characters is like very mysterious. You don't know who it is, and uh, he's kind of just like outside of the competition. He's not really fighting, and then you find out that it's Gilgamesh, and uh, he he unveils his power, which is called the Gates of Babylon. And the Gates of Babylon is a million billion portals. Op- uh, noble phantasm. That's what they're called. Noble phantasm. So like uh, the Excalibur is a noble phantasm. Um, so this portal opens up. Many portals open up behind him, and all of these like hilts and blades come out of the portals, and they're all noble phantasms. So basically, King Arthur has Excalibur, Gilgamesh has a thousand Excaliburs because he had all of the fucking treasure. He had all of the special abilities. So I thought that was one of the coolest things. I was like, fucking Gilgamesh is a goddamn badass. <laughs> so it's it's cool because like he is the he is the hero that. You know everything is based off of. He's the first epic. He's the first, the the first legend. So he's the most powerful of all of the fight. Like not even close. I'll take your word for it. It's Steve. fucking sweet. I'll Alexander see. the Great's in it. He's fucking badass. His abilities. He makes a reality bubble and he calls forth other heroes to help him fight. He uh, Alexander the Great's power is he fights well for fifteen minutes and then he dies. I don't. Know. I thought it was relevant. Yeah. <laughs> Ultramarine. Oh. Ultra! Ultra! When you're, that's your battle cry. Marnie's cool guy. <laughs> that's Marnie's cool guy. But also, you know, what they do have there at the museum, they have a gigantic, like, stone head of a bull from, like, the Minoans. And it's, like, a seven, eight ton bull head that's just massive. Sick. It's pretty cool. Sounds but sweet. I wanted to set the game there, but I was like, eh, it might be a little too dry for my players. Like,. Also not as familiar. Yeah, and so, like, the Field Museum, like, people know there's a giant T-Rex skeleton. Is that T-Rex skeleton going to come to life? Maybe, you know? Is the, uh, are are the big elephants going to come to life? Maybe. You know, who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, mummies. Yeah. Mum- it, could, it could be the mummies. You, know, you never know. There's a lot that could happen in there and a lot of fun stuff that's Ghostbuster-wise. Plus, you do all you can do animals, you know, animal yeah, possession you can do and stuff. Animal possession, you, you could have do, my fucking attacked by a walrus. Mm, you could yeah, have. They don't like that. You <laughs> could do like the the Native American stuff up up like with totem poles and like spirit warriors and crap. Like, there's a lot of crap that you could do. You up could there. have a haunt. You could have one of the Moldoramas be haunted. Moldoramas. I fucking love Moldoramas. <laughs> oh, the haunted. Oh God, it's so hot. <laughs> it's so hot. It smells really good though. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's not really that hot. It's it's just hot enough that it kind of singed my hands. Ouch! <laughs> this is just really uncomfortable, guys. Ow, oh, it's a little robot. It's cool. <laughs> Do they have Moldoramas in other cities? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's all around it's all around the U.S. Because I know it's like a big deal in Chicago to get all yeah, the Moldoramas. I have a fuck ton of Moldoramas. I, I fucking love Moldorama. I I've maybe bought my daughter one or two of them. Yeah, I've got a bunch of them. I always liked them when I was a kid. Now well, I'm well. Now... They switch them out. At, they they do limited edition ones. They do. I actually have several of the limited edition ones. They're really cool. Some of them are actually were like I don't have any of them, but some of the older old dramas because it's 50 years this year i think so that means it came out the same year as star trek uh that some of the older ones are worth a fucking fortune like there's a there's a jfk head 
that's worth a lot. Like, and they're nice. So <laughs> ask not what your country can do <laughs> for you. Yeah, there's 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 a few of them that are worth some serious cash. Uh, mm. It's very cool. I mean, I just like them because they're neat and they're they're yeah. cheap. Yeah. You know, and of course, as the sign says, it's an exclusive product. Yeah. So obviously, I like, have a little U five hundred five submarine from the Museum of Science and History. I have that as that well. That <laughs> section of the Museum of Science. The submarine's really cool. Uh, yeah. The as much as I'm not a World War II guy, that submarine section was pretty badass. And you gotta re- you gotta admit the Omni Max is always cool. The Omni Max is sweet. Yeah. yeah they, but they were playing shitty movies the last time we were there. They yeah. weren't playing anything cool. Like the Grand Canyon. Yeah. It was like it was. They were stupid. I wanted to see something about space. Space, space is the coolest. Yeah. I think I maybe mean, maybe my problem with the Science and History Museum is like there's not enough stuff about space. And all the old and all the space stuff there is a little out of date. Yeah. A little out of date. <laughs> Yeah, the planet Some, Pluto. <laughs> someday man will walk on the moon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One day people speculate man might even walk on the moon. <laughs> Slow down. Oh, we put a little robot on Mars. Yeah, put a robot on Mars. <laughs> Slow down there, Tubby. You're not on the moon yet. <laughs> Robot. Uh, robots. All right. Go to planetarbitrary.com for your planet arbitrary needs. You can follow me on Twitter at planet arbitrary. You can follow Steve at play on Steve. You can like our Facebook page. Game Classy Podcast, Bachelor, I, whatever. You can search for us. You'll Game find Assy. Us. Game Assy. Game Gassy, more like it. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. I got to admit, Steve, that since you started this new diet, you have been less gassy on the podcast. Uh, it's because I produce less gas. Yeah, I would imagine Unfortunately so. for myself. <laughs> I liked farting on the podcast. Yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. Um, you could uh, Best way you could help out the podcast, like, comment, subscribe on iTunes, give us the five stars, and say that we suck. I don't care. Scander put up a review. I don't know what I don't know if it was Scander for sure, but it said something about Scandinavians. So ass- Did he give us the five stars and tell us we blew? Yeah. Nice. So I'm assuming it was Scander. I have a lot of Age of Sigmar books. You have a lot of where where are the Age of My, the stack right oh, there. Oh, I see there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you do. I'm all in. <laughs> you are all I'm in. I'm all in. I got sucked in. It's yeah. over. <laughs> it's all over. It's have over. you actually have you been playing some games? Uh I'm still painting. Still painting. Yeah, you know me. I'm just like you. I don't play unless it's painted. Yeah. I'll play if it's unpainted. I don't do that. I, if it's in the process of being painted, I'll play. I don't. Do, I especially don't do that. The last time I did that, I I have a I have a I have a fucking phobia about it now because I have a superstition. Because the last time I played with an army that was almost finished but not actually done, someone dropped a fucking hardcover book on one of my regiments and destroyed like like half the regiment. Oh, I would just I would punch the guy. I, in the I face. was just like, oh, well, he didn't do it on purpose. I don't care. I was just like, ah, oh, ah. Uh, Ah. Do, you, do you remember uh, with my squat army when the kid knocked the case off the bar? No, but that's awesome. <laughs> and I almost killed the kid. I think I think Max was the manager then, and he told me go outside and breathe because uh, like he was like he and he told the kid he's like you have to you have to go because this guy's gonna kill you. But anyway, uh, that's funny. Uh, I think it was Max. I don't know who it might have been Paul or something. But um. Yeah, you can also watch us on YouTube, on the YouTubes, where I'll put up something like GW leaving fantasy, GW fantasy fight breakup, tune in here to find out, you know, and then we'll get like 2,000 well, views. We better clickbait. And people will be like, this is, you're clearly clickbait. You know what you need? You need to get girls in uh, cleavage revealing tabletop gaming cosplay. So like a chick in a commissar costume with like her boobies in the camera, make that the thumbnail. I just don't like exploiting women. Okay, then make it a dude. Make it a dude's butt. Oh well, now you're talking. Yeah, sure, I don't. I'm equal opportunity, dude. I that. Have you did you see the first pinup for Kingdom Death? Uh, the, the first guy pinup. No, I have they not. Have to, dude, his fucking package is out of control. Oh man, I'm excited. <laughs> you're excited. I'm excited. I love it. You're I, just an equal opportunity exploiter. I, I want that. I want the. I want the uh, equality. The key to equality is exploiting everyone equally. I guess, yeah. Everyone should be exploited, but in the same rate. And that's that's how our federal government works. Oh no, <laughs> they definitely exploit the lower and middle class far that's more. That's true, yeah. Yeah, they, they 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 use they use the penal code to really wreck the poor, and they use the tax code to really wreck the middle class, and then the rich and elite get to do whatever the fuck they want because they have the money. It's they do got the money. You know, you got fucking douchebag Mitt Romney paying fucking seven percent on his goddamn taxes while I'm fucking getting reamed by for forty percent, like like normal people, like normal people, because I can't afford fucking seventeen accountants to like get me all of the tax rebate in our seventy thousand page fucking tax code. Yeah, that's that's an accurate that's an accurate number. Uh, for those who are not who are not in America, and maybe for those in America who don't know, the United States tax code is seventy thousand pages. Seven zero 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 seventy thousand. So I don't know. That's why Apple's getting sued by Ireland. <laughs> oh yeah, well they're they're using Ireland as a tax shelter and yeah. they yeah, they have that money there. And all the Irish are like, ah, 
Yeah, you can't be doing that on our soil. How to talk you know what? You just you simplify the tax code. You make it a fucking flat rate. You don't have any don't, sort of. No, oh you yeah, don't, you don't make. Flat rate. Oh, no. you do, baby. Because no. here's the thing: we have a we have a thirty five percent we have a thirty five percent corporate tax. Right now, that we're the yeah. highest in the world. You know what the average corporation in America pays in their taxes? Fucking twelve percent. Yeah. And you know why they pay twelve percent? Because they have all these loopholes, all these exploits, yeah. and they get all these rebates. Wait, why you, you just tax them twelve percent? But you don't do you don't do a flat tax because that hurts the poor. That really hurts. Well, the poor. no, I mean you want to. I'm in a, I'm in a corporate tax. What you really well, want to okay, do? Is, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you that. But I yeah, mean, if you're what talking, you really like, want to do is you want to you want to progress you want to you want to progressive so income tax. Yes. Progressive income tax is something that 98 percent of economists say that we should use. Yes. Like, it is a it is a consensus agreement between economists that a progressive income tax is the best thing we could do, and we don't do it. I don't know why. Right, I'm knows? sure it's because there are people lobbying a bunch of money because they're making a shit ton of money off of the current tax code. Oh yeah, that's that's, that's how it works. Yeah, and then then you know we need to make that's lobbying. Why, why I can't get my damn you know, kinder guys? Got to got to break lobbying. You have to break poison pills being put in bills. This is the thing that's crazy. Like I can't like I don't know how the hell this came about in our government and i'd like you know if, if anyone could tell me on the facebook i'm actually interested if you know but how did our government get to the point where you can have a bill so say like uh the zika bill is a great example like this is a bill to have emergency funding to help prevent the spread of zika that's the bill right but because of how our system works and i don't know maybe other countries are the same way but uh person a submits that bill person b can say well also we're going to defund planned parenthood in this bill and person c can be like and we're also going to repeal this gun control law so suddenly this bill to make emergency funding happen for zika also defunds planned parenthood and repeals a gun law yeah uh, how does that work like how can that be a thing that doesn't make any fucking sense there should be one Subject on a bill, period. There should never be more than one. It doesn't make any sense for them to have more than one. Well, that's just the way our government is set up. Our government's actually not set up to make laws. Well, it's broken. Well, no, it's always been that way. It's never, it was, our government is set up to move very, very slowly. The federal government, because it's, it was originally designed as a, as a federalist. It's a state run in thing. Like our state, our states are designed to be run by themselves the federal right, government not doing should, that yeah you well know, that's I, there's the bigger problem i mean the civil sure. war showed us the problems with the with the states and so the federal government you have that and so that bills are designed to to not pass i i still stand it, it's, it needs to be very 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 important for a bill to yeah, pass I, I stand by i think the federal government should be a uh, a standard setter and it should say these this is the standard you need to reach with whatever and then they, it's up to the states to reach, reach that standard. I think that would be the ideal. Obviously, it's like I said, again, it's ideal, so it probably never happened. But it seems like it would make sense. Like, if the government says, you need to make sure that everyone in, in your state pr is provided, let's say, health care. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to make sure everyone in your state has health care. That's all the federal government does. They, they go, do you do it? And then they check every state. And they go, yes, no, yes, no. Do you have uh, it? And then you get, you get money if you do it. Well, you can't do that. Because that's not in the Constitution. Well, yeah, yeah, but maybe it's time to, you know, fix some 250-year-old rules. I, I, I agree with you, but I'm just saying that's part of the reason why stuff can't get done is because the federal government's only real power, as described in Marbury v. Madison, is uh, – no, not Marbury v. Madison. It was a different law, a different case, but it's the only thing we can do is regulate interstate commerce. Thank you very much, people. This has been political classy. <laughs> Joe Politi explained Politicast. the Politicast. Joe explained the Constitution to Steve. <laughs> Politicast. <laughs> All right. So, Steve, until next time, uh, uh, go to dragonfall.com. Dragon oh, yeah, dragon dash fall. Dragon hyphen fall. Dot com. Game classy. <laughs> <laughs>